Mr. President, thanks for getting back to us. Dean. Hi. Okay, so let's get how, right to how it. Is, how is your reception now, Janine? They had yeah, a security reception situation, but never, right, never sounds on, too good. Is it okay? It's okay, and you're you're on air right now, Mr. President, so good, let's I like get that. to it. Good. With you, okay. I like being on air with your beautiful radio. <laughs> well, rating. thank you. I appreciate that. Mr. President, even, uh, you know, aside from the, the, the some of the protesters, uh, in Washington, there is an excitement. We have a Supreme Court uh, justice. It's one of the highlights of your, uh, your administration so far. You have to be very, very excited about what you accomplished, and you accomplished it. Well, I am very excited, and, you know, the protesters were a very small group, a tiny group of people. I just left tens of thousands of people in Kansas, and, you know, it's uh, amazing what's going in the country, and we have a great new Supreme Court justice, Janine, as you know very well. I do. And, Mr. President, you know, a lot of people, uh, other presidents, might have pulled the plug. And we were talking about this while we were trying to reconnect with you. There were a lot of other conservative justices that you could have said, OK, you know, let's try somebody else. And it wouldn't have been the first time a president did that. But you stuck with Kavanaugh during his darkest moments. Why? Well, for one thing, it would have been very unfair to him, if you think about it. He's a highly respected man. What the Democrats did was disgraceful. Uh, these uh, things happened that just came out of the wind. There was no corroboration. There was no anything, Janine. This is a high-quality, brilliant man. He'll be a phenomenal Supreme Court justice. And it was my honor to stick. And I know that. A lot of people told me that. They said, well, we'll switch. You'll never get anybody like this. This is a very, very outstanding person and individual with an incredible family, and it would have been very unfair to him. What they did was disgraceful. What the Democrats did, and you saw that group with Blumenthal, who falsified his service in Vietnam, and a terrible mayor of Newark, New Jersey, Cory Booker, and, you know, the whole group, Diane Feinstein, who, in my opinion, leaked the papers. Uh, it was terrible what was happening and what was happening to him. Very unfair, so I did stick to me, yes. And I'm very All happy right. And I you did. know, Mr. President, you have a very uncanny instinct. You have a gut sense of things. And you were very disciplined uh, after Christine Ford came out and the left was going wacky. But there was one point where you pivoted at a rally in Mississippi uh, just a few days ago. You went off script. And some people said that you were extremely unkind uh, to Christine Ford. But what, what was it that got you to pivot from your restraint about her and to fight for Kavanaugh at that point? Well, there were a lot of things happening that weren't correct. They weren't true. And there were a lot of things that were left unsaid. And I thought I had to even the playing field because it was very unfair to judge. Now I can, you know, very nicely say Justice Kavanaugh. Right, and, right. Uh, it was a very unfair situation. So I even the playing field. And once I did that, it started to sail through. He was treated well, very, very unfairly, Janine. And, and, Mr. President, you know, when you say it started to sail through, even the Washington Post, I'm going to repeat that, even the Washington Post, top of the fold today, talks about the fact that when you went off script and you went after Christine Ford, saying nothing that wasn't already true, talking about her uh, uh, memory failures regarding the fundamentals of her assault, they said it was a turning point to victory, that when you did that, you turbocharged the momentum behind Kavanaugh. When his fate was most in doubt, I mean, there's no question that he has to turn around uh, and the country and recognize that what you did was instinctive, it was guttural, and you did it, and it, you won. Well, I think it was a very important moment. It was a, a very big turning point, as the Washington Post was actually, shockingly, uh, they said something that was very positive. <laughs> and I'm very proud of it, because we have a very— we're going to have a great, great justice of the Supreme Court for many years. And I fought hard to make sure that he got on. And you're going to see what happens. You're going to see how great he will be and will become. I have no doubt about it at all. 
All right. So coming out of this, should there be consequences, Mr. President, to those people who promoted falsehoods? When you look at someone like that lawyer Avenatti, who, uh, you know, the allegations that, that he was promoting when he brings out this alleged victim were so preposterous that they dissipated on their own. Um, should this person be held uh, 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 for the, the falsehoods, not just in terms of grievances with the uh, Bar Association, but even beyond that? Well, he made false accusations about me on another matter, totally false. It's a joke when uh, it's just a disgrace that they're able to do it. I'd love to see our libel laws get toughened up so you could take people and sue exactly. them. Exactly. But he made... The same thing, totally false statements. You look at what happened, and yes, I think they should be held liable. I would say they should be held to the highest standard. You can't go around, and whether it's making up stories or making false statements about such an important position, you can't do that. You destroy somebody's life. And yeah. there were many, many false things that were said about a very fine man and would, would have destroyed his family if this didn't happen. And it all came together in the end, and people realized it was false accusation, false statement. It was really something very interesting and actually very nice to see, because he suffered, Janine. That was really yeah. unfair. I watched that very closely, and he suffered with false statements made about him, things that never happened. <laughs> Did the Democrats make a tactical mistake that worked to uh, Republicans' advantage, unfortunately, with Brett Kavanaugh as a sacrificial lamb, who, who I believe, and, and I'm just going to say it again, that the turnaround was you in Mississippi. But did, the, did they make a tactical mistake, and is their anger going to carry them to uh, the midterms in a positive way? Well, I think they overplayed their hand. I think they were very dishonest with the leaks and other things that they did. Even look at the lawyers representing certain people. They're right out of the Democrat playbook. They've represented right. others that are Democrats. That's what they do. How did they end up with all these lawyers that are always the same ones? And I won't even go into names, but I think they overplayed their hand. And I can tell you that the enthusiasm and the love and the the, mm -hmm. the feeling in the Republican Party right now is higher than I've ever seen it. And you see Fantastic. polls that are going up like rocket ships, races that are going to be won by margins on races, frankly, that the Republicans wouldn't have won. And now they're leading and they're just better. We need more votes so that we can cut taxes even more so that we can do things that they will never do. They're going to open borders. And crime is going to pour in. We want to have no crime. We want to have borders where you come into the country legally. You come in through a legal process and so many things. The enthusiasm for the Republican Party is the strongest I've ever seen it, Janine. And it happened well, all over the last two to three weeks. All right. And, and it, if you're if you're joining us, I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Uh, you're joining Justice. Uh, we are having a conversation. It is the top of the hour with the president of the United States. I'm going to continue that conversation. Mr. President, continuing with, with the discussion, you said that Murkowski will never recover from voting no on Kavanaugh. And then she kind of neutralized it by saying she was neutralized with the uh, the senator, uh, dear, I believe, whose daughter was getting married. Uh, what's going to happen to her in 2022? I don't know what's going to happen to her. I thought it was a very, very sad vote. I thought it was very, frankly, disgraceful. And I appreciate that a Democrat, Joe Manchin, came and he voted mm -hmm. uh, in favor of uh, Justice Kavanaugh. And that was a good thing. But uh, that was very disappointing. The people of Alaska, I had tremendous success in Alaska. And what I've done for them with Anwar, which is one of the biggest yeah. uh, drilling sites in the world. Ronald Reagan tried to get it approved. Bush tried to get it approved. Everybody tried to get it approved for close to 50 years. I got it approved. It means trillions of dollars. And I'm not equating one thing with the other at all. But I've done so much for Alaska. I was shocked to see her vote. Absolutely yeah. shocked. And frankly, so were other Republicans. It was a very sad day, I think, for her. And I think it will go down as a sad day for her because he's going to become a great 
Supreme Court justice. Yes, and, and with respect to Susan Collins and the speech that she made on the Senate floor yesterday, which she's been receiving kudos from everyone, they say that Senator Susan Collins is now receiving death threats. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to show some of the video uh, of people uh, who continue to disrupt outside the Senate uh, floor as they voted today. What can we do about this? What kind of protection are United States senators going to get in this? This rough and tumble left that seems to have lost all sense of law and order? Well, you receive threats on both sides, but I will tell you, Susan Collins was a star. What she did was incredible. I spoke to her yesterday. What she said yeah. and the way she said it was brilliant, and it really covered it. She has, from the beginning, really liked Brett Kavanaugh. She had respect for his incredible genius, his, him as a scholar him as a, you know, great person of the law. Nobody knows it better. And she respected that. I know, I mean, she respected it right from the beginning. And she wanted to make sure that she was right on every other subject, including outside influence that came in. And in the end, she went through probably as carefully as anybody. She went through every paper, every document. And I thought her statement yesterday was absolutely brilliant. And we're very... It proud of her. And I'll tell you what, she's more popular now than she's ever been. And she's she's always been good, but she is more popular now, Janine, than she's ever been. You know, one of the things that she referenced, Mr. President, was that there was dark money, that's a quote, dark money opposing this Kavanaugh nomination. What do you think she meant by that? Well, I think I'd rather let her explain it, but it's a very, very serious thing going on yeah. with respect to this nomination. And the Democrats know he's so good, they just didn't want him there. And they would have fought others also, by the way, but they did not want him there. He is uh, great in every way. And he's central casting. I mean, this is a man yes. that was born for the position. I heard his name 10 years ago. They used to talk about he will someday be a Supreme Court justice. That was long before I thought of running for president, frankly. I used to hear his name as somebody that really should be on the Supreme Court. And that's what I did. I put him on the Supreme Court. And you, uh, it's going to be, I really think it's a great day for our country. Oh, a lot of people are sharing in this celebration. Mr. President, do you think, though, when you spoke to him, of course, do you think it was bittersweet for him? Well, I know this. Uh, it was going to be very easy. And I picked him also for that reason. I said, this man is so good in every way, on a personal basis, on an intellectual basis, on a scholarly basis in schools, uh, the highest grades, the highest marks, first to this class. I said, this will be an easy one. And they <laughs> fabricated stories about him to make him look as bad as possible. Their fabrication uh, had no bearing in truth. And it was really very difficult. And I'm really happy that we all stuck it out. You know, you could say I stuck it out, but he stuck it out also, and that took courage, because what they did to him and his family, Janine, was horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough thing, especially when you have little girls. I, I want to move on to something that you talked about at the rally, Mr. President. And you talked about a uh, sixth branch of the armed uh, forces, the Space Force. What is the Space Force? Well, Janine, as we advance... Space is becoming more and more important for defense, and that means defense and offense. And if it's going to be a part of the Air Force or one of our other forces, frankly, it's never going to be out front. It needs its own identity, and we're doing Space Force. The generals agree with me 100 percent, and so much of our defense and offense will be related to space. So we're setting up a new branch of the armed forces that's taking place very rapidly. Everybody agrees with it. All right. And, and uh, if Melania, who was in Africa today, I think in Egypt, at the, uh, right. in Giza, at the that's pyramids, right. she, uh, she looked so phenomenal. Uh, I agree. Her, her I agree. visit she there. Was, we're very proud of her. She was in four African countries. She went to, today. She was actually at the pyramids, and she's coming yes. home. She'll be home very early tomorrow morning, and she did a fantastic job. She's a great first lady. She's representing our country so well, 
and people love Melania, and they're all very proud of her. Well, your numbers have certainly gone up, uh, but I must tell you, her numbers are even higher, and she is such a, uh, a classy first lady. It's always great looking at her and listening to her. Mr. President, I am sure you have a lot of things to celebrate tonight. I am hoping that as we go toward the midterms, that the uh, 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 that we'll be able to, uh, to, to get the results of this uh, successful or feel the results of this successful momentum for your party, although I suspect the Democratic anger is going to be out there, too. Uh, last question, which one wins? Well, I think the Republicans are going to do very well. We need some more. You know, we have these tiny majorities, tiny. If somebody catches a cold, Janine, it's like we have to wait till they come back. Uh, we, ha we need more votes to get it all done. We're building the wall as we speak. Uh, but we need, I want to get it all at one time because we can have it done very quickly and so many other things. But for the most part, we've done almost everything. We've, we're building the military. We have all of the money we need. That was very tough. That was massively more than the wall. The wall is very small by comparison, but we've done so much and we're so happy about it. We're doing a great job for the American people and it is my honor to do that. I'm very happy about it. All right. Mr. President, we thank you very much for joining Justice this evening. I think it's time you celebrate it a little, although knowing you, you'll probably just go back to work. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Janine. Thank you. All right.